Uh, my name is Timothy Simons, and this is What's in My Bag. Is that what this is called? Well done, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> you know what? You can't find these guys on fucking iTunes. You know why? Because they don't have a name? Because they're not for fucking sale. This is fucking like being operated on by a chimp with a hard on and a hacksaw. I actually found this copy of this book, um, Pulphead, by John Jeremiah Sullivan. I've actually read it before, but I don't own a copy. Uh, my sister turned me on to him, and it's just a bunch of essays. He's got this one essay about um, this theory that ultimately there's a, a war coming between animals and humans because humans are sort of like, humans are a threat to all animals and that it's being accelerated by global warming because animals uh, in warmer climates evolve faster. He writes this entire essay about how he actually travels to find these monkeys that have had uh, organized attacks on humans and this person that he follows down there. And at the end, he's like, this is total bullshit. I made most of this up, but I, that doesn't mean I don't believe it. And so I just, I really, really love this book. The next thing I found, I'm not buying it, but you can get Chasing Amy like in the Criterion collection. Just in case we all needed Chasing Amy to get the Criterion treatment, it did. It's your birthday. This one, I actually already own, but I wanted to show it just because I don't think enough people have seen it, is this John Travolta, Brian De Palma movie, Blowout. Maybe I just think not enough people have seen it, and maybe everybody's seen it, but I don't feel like people talked about it enough, and it's sort of like back when John Travolta was just like the, like he was just like a straight up movie star. It's like this really weird, depressing movie about a sound editor who pieces together a political assassination, and it's really amazing. Great. Uh, my little brother is a bluegrass player, so I got him up with Doc Watson's CD. Somebody told me once that Doc Watson, when he plays, he's fast, but he's never in a hurry. I always really like that. I don't know. I try to do things like that. I feel like they're improvisers that are fast but never in a hurry, and I'm not one of them, and I sort of aspire to be. I don't know if I'll ever get there. This uh, Class of 1984 um, special edition, I saw the first half of this movie when I was maybe 12. Um, it was on one of those laser discs that you had to like put in and then, and then flip over, and we weren't supposed to be watching it. Uh, and I was at a friend's house, and we, so we couldn't ask his dad to come in and like flip it over for us or whatever. So I've only ever seen the first half of it, and I've sort of had to make up the second half in my mind uh, about what actually happened to them. You're dead, Mr. So I don't, I don't, I don't know, and it's like one of those things that's giving me nightmares. Like I saw the first 20 minutes of Clockwork Orange when I was nine. I mean, it was just horrifying. It was just a horrifying like 11 years until I saw it again. I got this, this Game of Thrones Tyrion Lannister. Uh, I got that for my sister. It just seemed like the kind of thing that she likes somewhat kitschy stuff. This might land on the right side of her. John Prine, in spite of ourselves. I found myself drawn to old tiny country music, not like the racist stuff, but I've been finding some comfort recently in the lack of pretension with a sort of old timey country music. And that song, In Spite of Ourselves, is a song that my wife and I, it's sort of like one of our songs, you know? So that's cute. That's some cute bullshit. Oh, we're going to Spain. Our nose is right off of our faces. There won't be nothing but big old hearts dancing in our eyes. Inside Lewin Davis, Coen Brothers are my favorite filmmakers and I've seen it already three or four times. But I guess I grabbed it because I have a really stupid theory that the entire movie is you're supposed to follow the cat. It's act, the movie is actually about the cat's adventure um, because it's sort of like, you know, you have that subway ride and it's the cat looking at all the things like, that's the furthest the cat's ever been away from home. Um, so that's the story that they wanted to tell, the one about the cat, but they didn't have cameras on the cat because they don't know where the cat went, so they had to, they had to tell a story that took up the same amount of time, and it just happened to be this fucking asshole who lost the cat. It's, it falls, I mean, the theory falls apart I mean, within minutes of dissecting it. Uh, I got a copy of Modern Times because I, I really do like Charlie Chaplin stuff. I've somehow never seen it. Oh, and then three things for my kids. My wife and I have twins. We have uh, two and a half year old twins, so we're starting like a movie night, you know, where we sit down and it's really cute. We all sit on the couch and we watch a movie and we have a son and a daughter and I'm just trying to put off the princess stuff, especially ones that are just like, I'm gonna wait for a man to appear. Uh, so I got a copy of Cars and Finding Nemo.
And then also for when they get older, a copy of Pee Wee's Big Adventure. That's just an important one. There's no way I'm gonna be able to, this is no way that I'm gonna be able to afford all this. I'm gonna have to put some of these things back. <laughs> Thank you so much for chatting with us today. No problem, thanks.